So anybody who has watched this channel for a while knows this unit is my home NAS. This is the 4U unit I bought. Oh, what, a case I bought a year and a half ago, whatever. Um, it's been running Exponology up till now. Now it's running something different. Remember, I promised y'all that I was going to come back and visit on RAID. That's what we're doing with this unit today. Now, we've already done some work on it. It's already got Unraid up and configured on it. But what I'm going to do is go over the hardware we used, why we used it, uh, and then we have an upgrade to do on this machine. So uh, let's get it started right now. So when this unit was running Exponology, this is the board we had in there, and this is the H97N Wi-Fi. It's a great board. Uh, this one only has an i3 processor in it, but I believe you can upgrade it up to an i uh, Intel i7 processor. I know it'll take the i5 and the i3. It has four serial to ATA ports. It has PCI Express. It takes, uh, I think we had eight gig in here, but it'll, take up to 16 it had Wi-Fi built into it but this board was not going to work for me for Unraid because I have some special needs some special stuff I want to do with Unraid so we went with a different board anyway this board I have in here now believe it or not was my old uh, i5 PC this thing has an i5 3770 processor in it um, it has right now 24 gig of RAM. We could take that up to 32. The motherboard is the GAZ77DS3H, I believe. So it's an old board back from 2011, 2012. What I really like about this board is it'll take up, uh, up to a higher end i7 processor. That's one thing. It supports 32 gig of RAM. It is a beast of a board. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's got it's a full-size ATX motherboard, as you can see here. But what's really nice about this board is it has two PCI Express 16X slots on it. So, the thing with Unraid is uh, I want to be able to utilize video cards under Unraid to do some neat little stuff with virtual machines as we move along. And since this machine is going to be the home NAS, it's going to be running MB or Plex, whatever I decide to go with, uh, I need a video card on here to do transcoding a video. This is something I toyed with doing on my Dell R710s. But the Dell R710s, if you've ever researched into putting video cards into them, I think it's more trouble than it's worth. It can be done. In fact, I've watched a video of a guy who did just that but it, you have to make modifications to the Dell R710 that I'm not comfortable making. So, why not take what I had laying around? This board is perfectly capable of running uh, a, a higher end processor and giving me the video cards I need. Now, right now I only have a GTX uh, 650 in here, 650 or 640, and a AMD HD 6450 in here that'll be changing i just put these cards into experiment with it now in addition to that this cpu the i5 that's in here has the hd 2550 
video built onto the CPU, so we have that to use as well. So in essence, I have three video cards available to use for whatever I want. And I even have some PCI slots in here. Uh, so, you know, if I wanted to throw a PCI dual or quad NIC card in there, I could do that. Now, the other thing I've done is we have that drive caddy in the front, as you know. And behind the, uh, the fan here, uh, I have the uh, one terabyte SSD drive that Sasha donated to us about a year ago. We're making good use of that. We're using that as a cache drive in Unraid. And, and I will take you along and show you the basics of how I have Unraid set up. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it's a good use of an older motherboard. Now, I could have gone AMD. I could have bought an AMD processor, a six core 12 thread processor for a hundred dollars and I could have got a motherboard for around a hundred dollars the the problem I would have is finding a motherboard with dual uh, dual 16x PCI Express slots it's they they start going up in cost I already have this on in on hand I should say so now the one thing I did do though is I bought another CPU now one problem with the i5 processor is it doesn't have uh, uh, multiple cores it has it's a quad core but it isn't a hyper-threaded processor, and I wanted a hyper-threaded processor in there. So what I did was I went out and uh, I went to an eBay seller, and for about 70 bucks, I got an i7. I think it is the, yeah, it's an i7-3770 CPU, uh, which has uh, four cores, eight threads, it's hyper-threaded processor. It's a 3.4 gigahertz chip. It'll turbo boost up to 3.9. And it has the uh, HD, uh, what is it, 4000? I'll have to look it up. I'll give you the specs on the chip because uh, I can't. I don't have it memorized. But anyway, it has onboard HD video built into that chip. So what I'm going to do next, I have Unraid up and running on here, and it's running fine. So now that you've seen how I have it configured, the next thing to do is to replace the CPU in here. So. This one, like I said, has the i5-3770 in it, uh, and it has a stock Intel CPU cooler. I have another stock Intel CPU cooler. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get you the best shot I can as I replace this CPU. We'll get started here. So here's the i5 CPU and the heat sink. I have unplugged the power. It is turned off. So I guess the first thing we want to do is... Uh, Turn these little doochamahickeys and get the fan off here. That should, ooh, great, Joe. Dropped it right on the CPU, great. Okay, so there's the CPU right there. Let's, uh, actually what I wanna do is go ahead and clean that up a bit before we take that off. So, let's get the cleaner and get it clean. And then now the true test is plug some power into this thing. Let's see, let's make sure it's seated on there. Yes, it is. Don't like that connector though. I guess they're all kind of loose, huh? Well, no, no magic smoke. So let's turn on and see if it uh, boots up. Well, it looks like it's posting. Probably help if I turn the monitor on. Yep, looks like it's posting. And it looks like it's booting into Unraid. So if we if we get a successful boot into Unraid, then we will go over to the uh, workstation 
and take a look and see if it sees my new processor and make sure that it's cooling and not overheating. All right, it says it's ready to log in. So let's go over to the workstation and take a look. All right, YouTube, so here we are. Uh, Name the server Unraid Beast. You see I'm running version 6.7.2. Uh, one of the nice things about this new interface, and I really like it, I've got it on the dark theme, but uh, I really like the new interface, uh, the dashboard. Uh, but for example, I can go out and I can choose a, see if they have a 4U. Let's see, we'll do a 4U with discs. How does that sound? Uh, let's do a 4U with fans. There we go. Nah, I like the 4U with discs. I don't know what I like. <laughs> to be honest with you, we we'll use it for you with disks. Okay, so up here I have choices. I can stop the array. I can put the system to sleep, reboot, power off, and or modify this here. So you see it's been up for one day, 22 hours, 36 minutes. The temperature of the motherboard is at 88 Fahrenheit. The processor it is at 86 you can see it is the Z77DS3H version XX, and the BIOS version is F9. I was tempted to update the BIOS on this, but uh, the uh, BIOS above F9 are all beta BIOS, so I don't want to do that. And then you can see we do have an Intel Core i7-3770 CPU at 3.4 gigahertz. This is something new with Unray. They are now uh, grouping the threads together so that you can see at a glance which threads are paired. So in my case, it's 0 and 4 paired, 1 and 5, 2 and 6, 3 and 7, etc. I've only got 24 gig of memory in here. I can go to a total of 32 if I wanted to. This board will support it. In fact, it even tells you right there a maximum size, 32 gig. I do have a uh, gigabit built-in uh, gigabit network card, and there is a additional fan on there. And then over here it shows you your Docker containers. I've got some VMs I've been playing around with. Now this used to be my Exponology NAS, my home NAS. It is now still my home NAS, but we're, we're doing some playing around with some virtual machines on it and so forth. So all of my data is stored here. Uh, so all my music, photos, private files, Steam games, videos uh, are all shared here off of this unit. The, uh, initially, when I set up on RAID, I was having trouble getting 100 megabit or megabyte uh, file transfer speeds. Uh, that has been corrected. The problem was me. Uh, I was trying to copy files while Parity was building. So this time, when I went out and created my array, I created it, and then I took the Parity offline, copied all my data onto the array, and then let the Parity build overnight. It just worked out better for me. So kudos to the subscribers that recommended that because it worked out really well uh, then i've got a couple of users one called root and, and one with my name and then over here you can see my devices i've got a my largest drive is my parity drive so that's a four terabyte drive uh, here's another four terabyte then a three and a three um, and then of course the cache drive which is a one terabyte ssd that was donated by sasha uh, in the UK at Blue Telecoms. Thank you again, Sasha. As you see, we're putting that drive to good use. And then if you come over here to the main, you can see my parity disks. You have to use with Unraid, you have to use your largest disk as your parity disk, which is okay. Uh, I like the fact that it tells you the temperature, it tells you the reads, the writes, errors, the file system. I went with XFS. Uh, from what I've studied, <clears throat> There's no benefit of going with ButterFS on the regular file on the file system for the drive array. Uh, they recommend to use it on the cache drive, which is what I've done. So the cache drive is there, you know, for temporarily uh, if I copy large files over something, or my virtual machines are stored on there, etc. And then I have the uh, Data Traveler drive, which is my boot drive. Let's see. Uh, I've got settings. I've got some plugins installed. I've been following along with uh, Space Invader 1's excellent videos on, uh, again, uh, I don't know anything about Unraid. Uh, everything I've learned, I've learned from Space Invader 1. I have joined the Unraid forums. I have uh, 
found some issues with Unraid. I'm not going to go into them on this video. In fact, this video is just more or less to show you that I've got it up and running. Uh, I've got uh, MB running uh, as a Docker container. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, here's my VMs I have running. Uh, here's some applications that are available. I have the stats program running that tells you the disk stat and your system stats. And then under tools, uh, I've got system profiler, so it gives you all the information here you could ever want. Come back to our dashboard. So there you go. There's uh, there's Unraid up and running on that Z77DS3H. Excellent motherboard. I have been trying to find a use for that motherboard. I have it now, so uh, I'm glad I I'm glad I kept that motherboard around. So the 4U case I had, the motherboard I had, I did go ahead and splurge a bit. I think I paid seventy seventy dollars or seventy seven dollars total for that i7 uh, 3770 CPU. Yeah, 3770. I thought it was a good mix between uh, you know I don't need a lot of gigahertz on this. Um, what I need is the multi cores, and uh, for that price, it was it was just better suited for my needs. Uh, the drives I already had, the SSD was gifted by uh, Sasha again. Thank you. So it was trivial for me to put this all together. In fact, you saw Jerry putting it together for me. I thought it was a good fit for him. So have I given up on Synology? No, that's you know that's I have a Synology NAS, and I have that Flash station we're experimenting with as well. So. I don't need this running Synology right now. Now my goal was to put MB on here. I've given up on Plex with the last interface iteration they had. We had too many troubles here with Plex at home. And you've got to get the wife or the or the spouse acceptance factor in there. So we've gone with MB and we're happy with MB. It works well for us. The problem is is with high def videos, MB and Plex don't work well unless they have a video card to transcode the video. I tried installing MB on this Unraid NAS and getting the uh, video card to pass through so that it would have a video card to do uh, encoding and decoding a video. And then I found out it will only decode, it can't encode video, and that has that that places a problem that creates a problem for MB or for Plex. So I had a better idea. I went ahead and I've loaded MB as a uh, program in the background on my main rig, which is the new uh, AMD Ryzen chip, the uh, 3600. So, um, and it handles, I've streamed up to four or five videos at a time. So I store my video files on Unraid Beast, that's what we're calling this. And then uh, the actual MB program is on my workstation, so uh, it handles the load just fine. So be aware of that. I did have some trouble. Your, uh, MB is not going to work properly, even with a pass-through video. And I didn't want to uh, sacrifice one of my video cards that's in my Unraid Beast just for MB. So a better balance for me was, to, like I said, to put MB on my local workstation and use that to transcode videos when needed. Now, I could have installed Unraid on one of my Dell R710s, but the whole reason I'm playing around with Unraid is because I want to see how pass through does with ver uh, with uh, video cards through Unraid and I can't do that on my Dell R710 it would require I'd have to modify the power uh, bus I'd have to get some video cards that are compatible I would have to actually modify the slots that are in there because they're only 8x slots it just wasn't worth in my opinion the time or the trouble to do that so that's why I've got this uh, this gigabyte board laying around. I thought we'd put it to good use, and I'm glad I did. I'm having a lot of fun with Unraid. Um, my first experience with it on the Dell was not so wonderful, but this current version of Unraid, uh, I've just been I've been very pleased with, and I've been able to set it up fairly easily. Once you get a few things, once you wrap your head around how Unraid works and how it does things, and you accept that and live with that, and you'll be good. Uh, and that's the epiphany I had to come to. So now this video is just to give you a taste of Unraid in my situation, getting it uh, getting it installed in the hardware that I used. I'll be doing a deeper dive into Unraid. Now, I have had some problems with Unraid, and part of it is that I'm just not familiar enough with the interface. But the other part is actual bugs or issues with Unraid. 
And uh, so I'm going to do a separate video on how I've got Unraid configured and how I use it to use a, how I set it up to use a set of virtual machines on it. And ultimately, also the goal will be running uh, to run a, a Hackintosh as a virtual machine on here with video pass through as well. And uh, so I'm at a crossroads right now. I'm trying to decide what video cards I want to keep in this Unraid. Uh, I'm not a big fan of NVIDIA cards. I'm not a gamer. So to me, compatibility is more important and being able to utilize the uh, card in a virtual environment. So I'm tending to go with the AMD uh, or Radeon RX series of cards. Um, they work well for me for my situation. Yours might vary. There are ways to get the NVIDIA card to work through through uh, Unraid. But seeing as uh, the OS X now is pretty much blowing nvidia off uh you you really need to have an amd card in there to have a good experience so that's what i'm probably going to end up going with but uh keep that in mind and like i said i have had some problems with unraid i've discovered a couple of bugs um and i've put them out there on the forum uh, asked the question i haven't unfortunately received any response but i just joined up yesterday which was sunday today is monday so we'll give it some time but there, yeah, there's some things that just annoy me. There's no way to clone virtual machines. There's no way to, there's no way to copy them. There is, but it's kind of convoluted and, and complicated. And you would think an operating system that you're paying money for, because Unraid is not free, um, you you think you they would have some of these things fixed or taken care of. So, but I, I, before I make any more complaints about Unraid, we'll dive a little deeper and find out some more information on it. I want to make sure I have my ducks in a row and give it a fair shot before I start picking it apart, the things that I don't like. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found this video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below. Leave your comments down in the comments section and donate if you are so inclined. We take PayPal and we take Patreon. I'm going to be doing a live stream Hopefully this coming weekend, which will be the weekend of the, let me give you a date, that'll be on the 2nd of November, uh, right after Halloween. So we're going to try and, I'm going to try and do it around noon central standard time and uh, I'll make an announcement on, on Facebook and on my YouTube channel and on uh, Twitter to let y'all know so you can be here. Uh, one, it's going to be a thank you for all of the folks, uh, all of my subscribers, especially those that have donated. So we're going to be putting some names out there, people who've made some pretty significant donations. I want to make sure I thank everybody on my Patreon page. And then we're going to be doing a giveaway on one of these AMD uh, gaming motherboards. So uh, if you want to participate in that, make sure you're here on Saturday. And again, I'll make another announcement as, as the date gets closer. And then I have another video coming out, and it's going to be on the Synology uh, Flash Station. We're going to set up a mail server on there. I know a lot of people have been curious as to how to set up their own mail server using Synology. So that'll be part of our Synology for Business series. So, again, thanks for coming to see us. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of y'all's support. You've been great. And we'll be doing more videos on Unraid as we learn it a little bit better. So thanks again for coming to see us, and please don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.